Hey, this is Joe. Welcome back for another video. We've pulled the intake manifold off of the VW GTI Mark V, and I'm going to show you a rather inexpensive way to walnut shell blast your intake valves and intake ports to get all the carbon buildup off. As you can see here, I've uh, taped off the PCV system, I've taped off the high pressure fuel pump. I pulled the injectors out and I've taped off the injector ports. And we've taken some Scotch-Brite and we've cleaned up the intake manifold area on the head. Now let me show you what I've went out and purchased in order to do, again, a somewhat inexpensive way to uh, walnut shell blast your uh, intake ports. I've picked up 25 pounds of crushed walnut shells, 10% uh, discount right around $25 plus change in tax. I picked up a 20 pound pressure blaster uh, around $88 and that also includes a 10% discount. I picked up an adapter that uh, fits onto your vacuum cleaner and provides a port for the pressure blaster nozzle and what you do is you take this you put it up against one of the intake ports, you hit your vacuum up to that, you put your high pressure blasting nozzle in the little hole, and then you can blast and suck out the walnut shell, uh, the crushed walnut shells out of the intake port. What I also did was take some rubber backed carpeting and uh, glued it to this so I can have a pretty good seal, because as you move this around you could get some gaps and I don't want a lot of the blast media floating around the engine bay. So that's what I did. So what we're going to do now, I have the uh, the 20 pound blaster filled with about half of walnut shell media. We're going to charge everything up to 90 PSI and then we're going to start blasting. I have some before images that I'll post here in a minute of what the intake ports look like and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the blasting and what the uh, intake ports look like after the walnut shell blasting. The nozzles that Harbor Freight provided with the pressure blaster the uh, walnut shells would not go through them. So what I did was I took a 2364 drill bit drilled out the blasting hole in this adapter I went and picked up a 7 16 inch stainless steel piece of tubing and then let me show you what we did. We took and drilled out the nozzle holder to 2364. We cut off a piece of the 7 16 inch stainless steel tubing and then we JB welded it inside this adapter and we're going to let this uh, cure overnight. Now we can take the piece of tubing attached to this nozzle and then when we stick the piece of tubing in with the blast nozzle we can pivot it left and right and up and down so that we can cover all areas with inside the intake port. The, what I was noticing with just the, the empty nozzle and no point or tubing on that it would spray walnut shells all over the place and it would only focus the walnut shells blasting on the valve. So uh, I wasn't able to move that tube around to cover all areas of the intake uh, port there. Tomorrow when this, after this finishes curing, we'll uh, take it back out to the car and we'll give it a test and see how it works. I think it's going to work much better now. So we have the attachment hitched to the vacuum. We put it up against the intake port and then we have the uh, blasting nozzle. We're going to put that inside the hole. These are the before images for ports 2 and 3. As you'll note, they're pretty bad and really cruddy with carbon buildup. Before you start blasting, you want to take a look at the valves inside intake ports and you want to rotate the engine around and you want to use the uh, left hand port here which is uh, the number one cylinder and you want to 
rotate the engine around until both intake valves completely close. After you think you've got them completely closed, put a little bit of carb cleaner in there. Make sure that the valves are completely closed. And then at that point, port 1, 2, and 4 are going to be completely closed. 3, when you noticed I've taped off port number 3 because those valves are still open. After you finish cleaning 1, 2, and 4, then you can rotate the engine around till the intake port 3 uh, that the valves close and then you can tape up the other ports that you just cleaned and finish cleaning uh, port number 3. The new nozzle works really well. I'm glad I put that together. We have blasted uh, cylinder uh, intake ports 1, 2, and 4. Now we have taped them off. Now we have cylinder or intake port 3 and we're going to rotate the engine around till the valves close. What I found out that works really well is initially you soak the intake ports with some uh, port cleaner. Let it sit about 30 minutes or so and then you come in with, uh, and I picked these up at Harbor Freight, they're basically a pick set. I have a really straight uh, big one and I took one of the ones that were bent at 90 degrees and I straighten it out to about 45 degrees. This allows me to get in behind the valve and in the way forward corners from the port uh, on the valve, uh, back of the valve face. Between these two picks and the walnut uh, pressure blaster, it cleans really well, but you're going to need both. The uh, pressure blaster by itself will only work really well once you pick away the large uh, deposits of carbon. So now I'm going to rotate the engine. We're going to do the last uh, intake port and, and that should be pretty much. I'll uh, come back and uh, post some final uh, intake port pictures of before and after. Here are the same two ports I showed you in the before images. These are the two in after I blasted and picked with the pick. As you can see they're really clean. Part way through the job in a walnut shell blasting the intake ports. The air dryer on this pressure blaster started leaking. So I had to take the air dryer off and just put the, the valve back on and I was able to finish the job. So this is going back to Harbor Freight uh, with a defective part. Now let's get to the conclusion of this video. So I've completely walnut shell blasted the intake ports and the valves and all the valves are now clean. The uh, surface of the uh, head to where it mates up with the uh, the intake manifold is clean. All the injectors are clean and put back in their places. So with the pressure blasting with the walnut shells and the two picks from the pick set from Harbor Freight I was able to completely clean the intake valves. The question is is it worth the DIY expense to purchase the walnut shells, which again, with a 10% discount, was right around $25 plus change in tax, and $88 for the 20 pound pressure blaster from Harbor Freight, and that's also with a 10% discount tax and change? And the answer to that question is no. I found out that if I pre soak the intake ports, Again, so, uh, cylinders one, two, and four uh, with the valves closed, I was able to put some uh, injector cleaner in each of the ports, let them set for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then I went through with, a, with my two picks and picked as much carbon buildup that was on the valves and in the ports, and then I wiped those out with paper towels, and again, then rotated. Now I, again, I blasted with the walnut shells and even though it worked very nicely for the added expense and big mess that it created I have walnut shells everywhere now that I'm gonna have to clean up and I even got some walnut shells in the uh, uh, cylinders I went and bore scoped uh, all of the cylinders and there's a little bit of flakes of walnut shells inside the engine so I'm gonna do an oil change when I wrap this up, uh, what I would suggest doing instead is uh, Harbor Freight also sells a series of 
wire brushes and what I would recommend is with the pre-soaking and the picks and then get in there with the, the curved wire brushes I would say you could do pretty much as good of a job it won't necessarily be as clean as with the walnut blasting but the difference in price a little bit more time a heck of a lot less money and I would say you can do just about as good of good a job as with the pressure blaster and the walnut shells so next time I do this I'm probably not going to go the route of the walnut shell pressure pressure blasting I'm going to take this unit back the uh, air dryer started leaking and, uh, I had to remove it in order to finish the job so I'm going to take it back I'm going to get my money back and I'm not going to purchase another one. So hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.